Well, we've now got our model and it's built here and it's kind of looking roughly the way I want it to be, but it's a little bit boxy. To be honest with you, I'd like this surface to be quite a bit smoother than it is. And I'm not going to get that just by putting cuts in and, and, and playing around with a lot. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put some smoothing onto this. Now there's two ways that you can do this. And the way that I would first of all point you towards is using something called NERMS. And these are part of your editable polygon. So if I've closed everything up here, I've got my object selected, and you come down to Subdivision Surface. And what I've got here is this little button called Use NERMS Subdivision. So I'm going to flick that on, and straight away you can see that there's a difference that has happened to the mesh. It's become a little bit smoother. I want that to be smoother still, so I'm going to up my iterations to first two, and then possibly three. I wouldn't go beyond four, to be honest with you, uh, because what's happening is, if I show this ISO line display, you can see every time I press that iterations button, the number of polygons is increased by a factor of four. So there's quite a lot going on there. Um, really, I think I'm going to come back to two, and I'm going to turn that ISO line back on. There we go. Now, the reason why we're doing this in the editable polygon is because it allows me a lot of sort of movement with how I want to then go in whoop, how I want to go in and start modifying this model for example if I turn on my vertices now what I get is I get a control cage that's the orange thing around my model underneath so what I can do is I can start to grab hold of sets of vertices and I can start to sort of change the shape here make that a little bit more bulky a little bit more like a Thunderbird there. Maybe I can start to grab hold of all of these vertices and pull them out. And what I'm seeing is a real-time approximation of what's going on with my underlying mesh and what's going on with my finished object as well. And that's really, really important because to be able to see what you're doing like this and to be able to work like this is hugely important. You know, the, the ability to see what your final mesh will look like. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I can sit here and I can say, well, I don't like the way that these wings came up. They look really good to begin with in the low resolution mesh, but not now. So maybe I'll either make them flat or maybe I'll even try taking the whole of the wing section and moving that up and seeing what that looks like. So maybe that looks a little bit better. Maybe it would be better if I took these ends in actual fact and I pulled them forwards. Or does that just look like a bottle opener? Well, it looks a little bit more like a, a spaceship here. So maybe what I can do is I can play around with a few of these sets of vertices and just sort of scale them out a little bit and maybe scale them back. You can see here, all I'm doing is I'm just picking up sets of vertices and moving them around all at the same time. And the advantage that I've got with doing it this way, this that looks daft now, it looks like a big pair of flappy ears, doesn't it? The advantage I've got in doing things this way is that I can see that instant feedback. Yeah, the whole time, instant feedback, instant feedback, instant feedback. So, very, very good. I've now completely changed the shape of my model. But if I come back here and I take off this NERMS subdivision, you can see my underlying control hull has also changed as well. So, it's a very, very quick and very, very useful way of working. Another option. That I would say have a look at using is by adding a modifier over the top called Turbo Smooth. So you can see there we've got Turbo Smooth, and Turbo Smooth does pretty much essentially the same thing, except for it's added as a modifier. Now the advantage of doing this is one that you come onto when you're working with uh, characters and animating characters later on down the line, whereby you may not want to have the smoothing within your editable polygon because it will cause problems with the enveloping. And these are all words and things that you, you'll find out about later on. But what you would want to do is you'd want to put a turbo smooth over the top. Now turbo smoothing is very, very quick, very, very simple. I can still come back down to my vertex and I can still show hide my end result. I still get the control cage that's appeared on here. So I can still make changes to the underlying mesh. There's absolutely no problem about that. And I can still see my smooth surface over the top. So really what you've got here is you've got two different ways of 
doing exactly the same thing. One is good if you're just going to have a static model. The other one, the Turbo Smooth, is really useful of putting on the at the end of a, a, a modeling cycle or an animating cycle where you've got a character and you want it to be smoothed off. However, doing the smoothing is all very well, but what happens if you want to start having some slightly harder edges in here? Uh, what happens if, for example, I don't want this edge to be quite as smooth as that? I want it to be a little bit more mechanical in the way that it's joined. Well, what I can do here is I can go to my edges. Uh, maybe I'll just turn off that turbo smooth so I can see what I'm doing for the moment. And under my selection, I'll pick edge and I'll say ring. So I've got all of the edges around there selected. And I'm going to use my connect tool here. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to slide it right the way down towards the bottom there. And where's my cursor gone? Here we go. I'm just going to click OK to accept that so that now when we turn on the smoothing, you can see that what's happened is we've got more of a mechanical join going on here. And if I was to push that down even further, that would just become harsher. I can do exactly the same again at the top here if I just marquee select all of those and I say connect. What I want to do with that is pull it right the way up to the top and you can see the effect that that's having in real time on my on the, the, the back of the plane here. So I'll click OK to that. Another tool that we've got available to us, if I take off that Turbo Smooth, we know full well now that that's, but uh, if I turn on my Use NERMS, I'm going to get that result there. However, if I go to Edge, and I'll just turn that off, so again, I can see what I'm doing. And I select these edges around here. There we go. I've got one other option that's available to me and this is very important because what I've got here under my edit edges option is this thing called crease and look what happens if I do that crease we end up with this very hard very mechanical looking edge on our model so we'll turn that back up to three and you can see there that that very that really is a very very hard edge that we've got there just to sort of show that again what I could do is I could say edge and I could grab these edges at the top here and again we'll go for crease and left click and you can see there that we're getting this very very harsh sharp edge all the way along there and that's really very very useful because it can give you an awful lot of control as to what you're doing and how you're you're working so for example we we'll take this one here and I'll take that edge that's creased so maybe we'll take these that one's creased and let's go for that one as well there we go so you can see these corner edges have come in and it's looking really really rather quite good you know maybe I might take that one down it there's all sorts of things that we can do here it's it's just very very useful in the way that you work and the way that you create edges that if you want things to look a little bit more mechanical you can either go to edge select an edge and use crease or you can do what we've done here, which would be uh, if I took this edge and selected by ring selection and then connect. You see we've got that option that we can say I want there to be a slide and I want to make that, that new edge loop as close as possible to the, the original one. And that's going to give me a little bit more of a, a right angle in there. So really you've kind of got two choices here. You can either use the extra edge or you can use a crease. So when you're using NERMS or when you're using Turbo Smooth, it's a very, very quick, very easy way of adding that extra detail into your model.